Hey there, monkeys. Grab that cup of coffee, kick back, and relax. We'll get started with a sit rep in just a minute. Hey, welcome, folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. It's going to be your sit rep. It's 11 a.m. Central Time coming to you from the great state of Texas live in the Monkey Lounge. And so without further ado, if you would hit that like, subscribe and bell for notification. And uh, let's get on into what we've got to cover today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the usual stuff. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at the skies uh, and then we're going to talk more. Uh, in detail around some of the things happening in Syria, the things going on around the Black Sea uh, in terms of Constanta, and uh, what is happening with your dollars and what is going to be the big booster that gets us out of this economic rut that hasn't even hit yet, but many, many, many people are already feeling it. And so, uh, yeah, so let's kick it off as always here in Skyglass. Again, if you don't have this app, uh, I'm telling you, you are missing out on a lot if you're using just the other trackers. So this thing will get every bit of data you need and uh, paints the picture. This is the beauty of sky glass and why I like it so much. I get uh, a lot of screenshots of things that are from above, and uh, it's it doesn't give you the complete picture. I mean, if you look at it like this, right, you can see traces. You can see where they're going, uh, but you can't tell, you know, are these touch and goes? Or is this, uh, you know, holding altitude and, and providing um, fighters with fuel? And the only way to tell from this uh, is to basically drop down and look at it. And you can see uh, it's, it's a higher altitude, right? And so um, that really does help quite a bit, especially if you're looking at things over in, say, Constanta around the Black Sea. Uh, when you're looking at traces of aircraft that uh, are coming into the area and going around, it's hard to tell, is it fighter support or are they, you know, basically getting some stick time uh, and cycling that gear, right? Uh, like I said, it's just a beautiful thing. So, all right, we're looking at every fueler is currently on the screen. We've got 19 up over the United States. And uh, as you can see, our usual little suspects down here on the Texas border, which is a very good indicator of fighters down here on our Texas border. And I'm not talking about Laughlin or Del Rio or anything like that. These aren't trainers. Uh, these are going to be, you know, actual fighters that are patrolling our skies, okay? Uh, and then notice we've got one up here to the north uh, towards Canada. The usual stuff here uh, kind of in uh, the mix south of Detroit, et cetera, and then over, you know, the northeast, which is, uh, that's the normal kind of protocol here. This one is out over the the kind of the point there. South of Virginia Beach, just over right on the coastline. So we probably have some fighters out this area as well. Uh, man, interesting times we live in, isn't it? So, all right, let's jump over to Europe. 
and uh, don't have anything showing. So let's uh, let's kick it on around. Let's go over to Japan. See if we've got anything. Nothing there. Down to Australia, and uh, nothing there. So uh, we will head back over here to Konis, and then we're gonna unzip what we have here and um, and see what else we got in the sky. So let's uh, let's do a total count. We'll take the air refuelers out. I guess I lost my DC-10 that was already on there, so that's good. And uh, we're going to refresh that button real fast. And let's see what we've got total count-wise, uh, which should pump in here in just a second. I wonder why it is not wanting to do that. Well, while I mess with it, yeah, I don't see that DC-10 on here. Okay, so yeah, that's the way we got to do it. All right, here's your 41 NAs. Just uh, these are people flying incognito. So let's just do it this way. I want to, since it's not loading the other piece, eh, let's uh, let's look at the traces for the heavy lifts. We haven't done that in quite some time. Just to get a general feel of where these aircraft are headed. Uh, we're looking at C-130s, C-17s. It looks like a single C-5 that's up in the air. And uh, these traces, remember, uh, just... This thing is painting a picture every five seconds, okay? And so here we go and just kind of get a general feel, and then we'll throw that C5 in the mix. Then we're just going to go uh, another one here. There's another C5M down there, kind of hiding from me. I think we've got them, most of them. And, yeah, you can see, looks like a little activity here on the West Coast. I was expecting to see a lot more into the port here. In South Carolina, but I uh, don't see that. Um, mostly the yellow lines here are going to be your C-130s. So those are going to be kind of those. Uh, they carry a lot, but not anything like the C-17s do. All right. Uh, let's go over and look at Europe. Let's see if we've got any activity here. Kind of paint a picture for us. Most of the moves, uh, although the, the C-17, the military stuff, is definitely you know, moving a lot of big hunks and chunks. Most of the stuff that's getting transported are going to be those independent charters like uh, the Atlas Airs and the Western uh, Global, Western Globals, Omnis, uh, you know, Coletta. Those are going to be the folks that are really moving most of our equipment right now. And then a lot of it's coming in on uh, the ocean freight too. So, all right, C-17 wise, eh, not too busy. Of course, this is grabbing stuff that is actually flying and up in the air right now. So, uh, all right, let's get over and take a look at the watch list. Kind of start breaking it out. We're going to look over Israel right now. We've got some stuff, so we'll kick it off in Europe. Notice this one too. This is a, um, uh, a dash eight. That is, uh, yeah, the spec ops boys. And then there's that Glex. I think we've got some stuff happening right now. In Syria, we'll, we'll look closer at that general area, but that last aircraft we just showed, the Glex, is a comms bird. Um, and then these right here are going to be mostly uh, drones. we got some drones that are over Turkey. Notice this one here that's got uh, another drone, uh, current active in-flight emergency. And so that one's squawking, uh, an emergency squawk there. That's why it's lighting up that yellow and red to get your attention on the screen don't see those very often. We get over here to Europe, and then, uh, of course, we've got, uh, you know, the usual suspects. It looks like a little Italian G5 that is up, and then our balloons. Uh, the one, the little NA we just pointed at is actually another uh, Mill Intel balloon. That's an E3 Sentry and a couple of Survey Birds. That's a Survey one, as is the other that's on the ground uh, or real low altitude there. Let's pop on over here to Conus. We've got a couple of the Department of Energy birds up. One there uh, looks to be just uh, cruising around uh, the, the um, another survey flight. That's going to be a, a blue and white Gulf, one of the sand birds. This is your Habal flight or uh, balloons, Intel balloons. Same thing with this one. Again, Mill Intel, that's going to be NSA grabbing everybody's data. And then all of this, uh, mainly survey flights that are currently up. Now, this one, this is a weird one. Altitude, it's actually registered to South Africa. Altitude is a negative 900 feet. It has been sitting off our East Coast for about a week now, and I've been watching it. It goes under yellow wings. 
Uh, the C-101 is going to be Department of Homeland Security Secretary. And then uh, got a little NOAA bird, some more survey flights. Same thing down over Florida, it looks to be Homeland Security, et cetera. So let's get over to Intel. And uh, again, notice looking over this general area, uh, Jordan, very, very heavy in surveys. Same thing with Israel. We've got a lot of stuff moving and popping on that side. And then this one, a broken tra uh, trace headed over to Iraq. And this over Romania, over Constanta, all right? Uh, I think that's important because they are eyes on. When we get into no tams, I'm gonna we'll talk a little bit more about Constanta. All right, and we get up to the usual area to the southern side of Kaliningrad, all the way up to um, to the right side of Belarus, or sorry, left side of Belarus, and up towards uh, Saint Petersburg. And then this broken trace, that's an Intel bird come back to the U.S. Don't know which one it is, but. Uh, we'll probably see it starting to do some more work there in the United States. Nothing really else happening there from that standpoint. Now, I am going to bounce over real fast because I want to see if we can catch this uh, this flight right here. Uh, this one is one of the GLEX. If you notice the picture as we look at it, and I'll, I'll click on it here in just a second, all these big domes and everything on it, that's not an intel gathering bird. It's actually a comms bird. And so there are a multiple multitude of these little dudes that are out there you just got to find them um, but they're like diamonds in the rough if you can if you can actually nail them down because they're glex they kind of roll into the commercial side of the house but this is a military application this actually allows the the troops on the ground like your spec ops boys um, communication so it uh, it ensures that these guys aren't in a situation where they can't communicate with people right it keeps them from getting hit by friendly fire it keeps them from uh, you know, just getting in a in a in a bad place. Uh, because remember, I mean, even though there are satellites surrounding, there's that mesh network around the world. Um, sometimes they're getting jammed up with stuff because this is a war uh theater, right? And so there's all kinds of electronic stuff. Well, this aircraft right here uh is basically allows those guys to communicate directly to their command, airborne command. Um, without having to, you know, be routed through satellite to uh, someplace, you know, it could be around the world. So anyway, very, very powerful system. And um, you can see there's some activity going on when you get this uh, right here along this general region. If we look at the Syria map, this is where we're talking about here. This is a rock down south. This is where these guys are probably operating. Okay, that's boots on the ground. Um, now, this part, remember, we've already looked at this. Look at all the Iranian, uh, you know, areas that they are in. This, um, these are stationing sites by the Iranian forces. Keep in mind, that is right on the border of Israel. And, um, and then, of course, here up in Damascus, notice the mix. You got Russia and Iran. Again, we talk about the Gog Magog War, Ezekiel 38. That's what we're starting to see take shape here in terms of that chessboard over Syria. I believe Syria is going to be probably what goes hot uh, versus uh, Ukraine. Okay, that's just my opinion, but just based on the amount of people that are inside of Syria, for what reason? I have no idea. It's I, It doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm sure there's something behind it, but, uh, you know, which could be the hook, uh, prepositioning themselves to strike Israel. So anyway, let's get back over to this aspect of it. There's a lot of aircraft that are in this general region. This one here that's an NA uh, C-130, again, coming in and out of Baghdad. Uh, but you know, we get a lot of activity going on right here, right now. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad it held that aircraft for me. So let's get back over here. We're going to talk. Uh, we talked Intel last I wanted to show you this because, as you notice, it just dropped off. Had I waited another 30 seconds, we'd have lost that aircraft, all right? Uh, just like that one. See how it just pops off line? Yeah, they do that a lot. Uh, do notice one thing here. Look at the active drones that are up over Turkey, all right? And this actually, actually has since dropped down. We did have about four more that were active all in this area as well, okay? And then I have started to capture some more. We've got them down here 
into Africa. We're going to look at the UN traffic here in just a minute uh, because it paints a very interesting picture. Uh, we've I've got a couple of drones I've been capturing down here in Brazil. And uh, our drone list is up to, I think, 91 in terms of the watch list. And uh, these are active volcano alerts for pilots. All right. Okay. So let's get back over here to the surveys. We're going to take a look starting in Europe. Uh, we're at 178 for the last three days. Notice there's one looks to be transitioning back up to its home base operations from down south. Uh, we've got a little activity there over near Poznan, the U.S. military base. And then, of course, we've got um, other stuff going on down here in Australia. Again, Perth, very, very active. Notice this is a weird trace line. Notice that it goes up. <laughs> That's the first one I've seen that actually traced at different levels. That's the kind of stuff you see with the drones in the U.S., like the Q4 and Q9s. Um, now, this one here, also uh, just notice we've got the same locations as always. The interesting big takeaway for me when it comes to these drones is that they're going back over sites. That tells me that somebody is already analyzing the data, and they're going back over to get better grabs of other data, all right, to basically finish painting the picture of an area that they've already surveyed, okay? Notice again, long transition lines. I see some more efforts, some maybe some patchwork going on in the Northeast. I My feel on this, uh, if you're not familiar with the survey flights, what I'm talking about, you're talking about aircraft that are doing ground gathering data um, using techniques like LIDAR or just straight up camera imagery, right? Uh, video type of stuff. Why they are doing it, I think they're shaping a battlefield. I think you're going to have something happen either economically or uh, it could even be related to, um, you know, a coming election or something along those lines. But the fact that it is uh, going around the world tells me that this is probably going to be tied to uh, some type of a collapse, economic collapse, et cetera. They're going to have to contain areas. Uh, because it's going to spill over, it's going to get crazy, if this is indeed what they're doing. I do think it is for a battlefield, though. Um, so, all right, let's get on over to the Ruskies. And uh, you can see in and out of Moscow, uh, got some interesting traces headed down south and north. That one's kind of normal. This one is uh, into Turkey, you expect that. But then notice you got them coming down into the... Uh, into South Africa, Cape Town, all the way down. Now, this is, again, the Ruskies, right? They are working on building that alliance within Africa right now, hot and heavy. We got them into the same areas, and I'm going to show you the UN side, headed in the Middle East there into Qatar, UAE, and then notice here into uh, kind of north, uh, I guess China would be the other locations, and then it looked like northern India there but uh, or north of India. Uh, that could have just been a fuel stop, though. All right, that's going to be your Ruskies. Let's look at the drone aspect. Just notice this one is a trace that is broken, looks to be headed out toward, uh, you know, on the Pacific side, maybe towards Hawaii. Uh, maybe not. Uh, we'll watch and look and see if we get any drone activity or Hawaii. But again, coming out of that Malta area, headed up uh, towards Constanta. Again, uh, that is a major, major uh, location for NATO for probably a, a good reason. I won't say the word. We'll just call it HT. And uh, you'll just have to figure out what a HT means. I know you you guys can do that um, without me saying it. Uh, and then those are drones over Turkey. Again, like I said, uh, we've got more stuff I've been capturing over Africa. And uh, you can see there's one right there. That is another UN location uh, that's got drones up. So... <laughs> Yeah, go figure, right? Let's see. I want to bounce around a little bit here and see if we got anything over Australia. I'm not seeing it. Then we head up to Japan. Nothing there. So from a drone perspective, not too much, okay? But let's get into the UN, guys, and see if we've got anything that uh, catches our eye there. Now, notice I've been tracking. I've only got about 10 UN, UN planes that I'm tracking right now. Uh, I just keep adding to the database. That's an area we kind of expect to see them in over there to the western side of Africa. In and out of Ethiopia looks to be almost like a base, home base operation. There, again, that's where we saw the drone. 
We see the gray birds go in and out of there, but just notice you've got uh, a lot of short hops in and out of that particular reason, uh, region. <laughs> a reason. And then this one starts to get me. Okay, what are they doing in UAE and Qatar? Uh, Riyadh, one little pop into there, but notice the traffic flow headed up to Istanbul. That's a major port. Hmm. What could they be bringing in or out of the port location? That's interesting. And then you get into Europe and you can see them uh, bouncing in and out of uh, some of these areas there. It looks to maybe Denmark. I can't tell there because uh, my screen is uh, even zoomed in. A little hard to read sometimes. So, um, But yeah, there you go. That's going to be UN. And uh, we're going to skip R135s going go into the sub hunters just to see what these boys are up to last three days, a little bit of activity off the East Coast, and um, just a couple moves there across the United States. Again, these are P8s. We get over here, I will tell you, they are hiding a lot of their flights and wiping them after the fact. In and out of Malta, headed up to Constanta. Again, seems to be a very focal point right now for NATO and the U.S. Wonder why. All right. And then down to Australia, and you can see just some moves from south to north, and then a little bit of work there over the, over the water area. Now, I do know the U.S. and Australia are getting ready to kick off an exercise here shortly, and uh, we'll keep tabs on that as well. Um, so let's get into the news cycle. We've uh, breaking out over here. We'll start it off with Flashbang up here in the Senior Living Center. And it uh, looks like he is uh, just doing really a lot of nothing today, 10 a.m. I don't see any TFRs related to him as I get over to this side. At least last check, I didn't. It's uh, kind of a dry, hot mess. Uh, we get up here and take a look at the fires in Canada. And that, if that doesn't just blow your mind, uh, it's incredible um, just how many fires are actually active and going on up there in Canada. These right here, little yellow circles here, these are going to be your TFRs tied to air shows. Uh, this one here is space ops. The red dots are going to be heat signatures. So there's something going on there. It hasn't been indicated as a fire, although it is giving off some type of a heat element that um, they're picking up. All right. Uh, winds kind of coming down, so you may see some more smoke and stuff because the jet stream looks to be sucking it across Canada and bringing it down here into the U.S. So... Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, you guys may see a little bit of haze and smoke from that. And then, um, let's see, up the East Coast, again, this is a permanent TFR that is for uh, going to be for Flashbang and uh, the White House. Um, you know, one has to ask, why haven't they changed the name of the White House? Uh, somebody's got to find that offensive, Right. Uh, you go around and take away all the general things and everything that's related to Civil War. Well, uh, White House seems to not be changed. Let's see what they call it, because somebody will end up raising a flag eventually, and they'll give it another name. I can almost guarantee it. All right. Uh, just one of my little, I don't know, just thinking out loud. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's going to be kind of what's going on TFR-wise. I don't see anything. Catches my eye. Let's get rid of the news cycle. Higher military spending will save the democracy. As we always say, war is an economy. But that is really their plan. Is uh, You can look around the world. You can watch everybody's economy starting to tank. And uh, you go look at history, World War I, World War II. Um, every single one of them have been tied to some type of an economic woe. And uh, the way they dig themselves out of it is they go into a war. And uh, it basically pumps up spending. Remember, uh, it, it's all about the corporations around the world, and those are the ones that are ba basically controlling most of this. And speaking of that, look at this one. Number one DOD contractor in the world, Lockheed Martin, predicts a strong profit as global instability rises. Yeah, their shareholders... Uh, go take a look at the board of directors on this one. It'll it'll definitely get uh, your eyebrows raising up a little bit. But look at this. Expects a full year net sales between $66.25 billion, um, and that is up from its earlier forecast of $65 billion. So 
It is pumping. They say the big ticket item here is the F-35, although that aircraft seems to be having quite a few problems. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're saying quarterly net sales rose 8.1%. And uh, you can see if you are a shareholder for Lockheed Martin, you are watching your dollars just go boom. This is uh, uh, pretty good for my retirement, I will say that. But um, yeah, there you have it. So let's bounce on over here. And when we start talking about NOTAMs, we've been talking about Constanta a lot. Pay close attention to this. There is a box here that uh, – we had some chatter about uh, maybe a, a Navy P-8 that was uh, lost in the general region as well as a drone. <clears throat> I've looked at the aircraft data. Uh, I've seen some things that make you kind of wonder because uh, we had some some aircraft that were going to uh, look like they were getting ready to hook up for an air refuel. And then uh, the P-8 breaks off hard right. The 135 goes left, does some little squiggly lines like it's trying to avoid something. Um, and then, of course, this little box here pops up pretty, pretty close to after th that happening, which seems to be now they're saying <clears throat> it's an exercise ske scheduled, but it says new military danger area in that general region. So um, surface up to 40,000 feet. So if, if indeed this is the area, remember, Constanta is the, the focal point. Notice the boxes all around Constanta right now, Okay. Most of the flights that we are watching go in, R-135s, P-8s mainly, those two, uh, as well as we're seeing some air refuelers, which would indicate to me there's probably some fighter support um, that are coming into this general region, they, uh, they get wiped. So when I run my sub hunters, the only way to catch them is to actually go back and look at the aircraft that are coming in through some of the historical um, data, right? Ukraine situation report, huge explosions in Crimea. That is near the depot. That's a, uh, basically a hit by a Ukrainian drone strike that took this out. Now, we get back over here. If you're not familiar, this is, uh, this is Crimea. This is Russia, heavily Russia-occupied. Uh, Moldova has got areas that are very pro-Russian, and that's why you get a lot of these uh, aircraft that are doing reconnaissance over this area. Um, but again... This is the only way they're able to get stuff in and out of the Black Sea, uh, mainly the grains, et cetera. Odessa has been compromised. It's down. Um, not really anything coming out of that. The bridge that was hit was right here in Kerch. It's the, uh, the Kerch Bridge. And uh, it's a multi-billion dollar bridge that connects Russia to Crimea over on this side of the house. Uh, when that thing goes out, that basically traps everybody here. Uh, where they can't get out of Crimea without headed, heading north, which puts them into the war zone, okay? Of course, Zelensky, he blames his failing counteroffensive on a lack of munitions from the West and delayed training. Yeah, it's our fault, folks, because these guys don't know how to fight. You can give them everything you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, they're not going to know how to use it. And um, eventually, this will collapse without NATO coming in. Now, you have to think, well, all right, the guy's failing. Things are going south. Why are we continuing to push money in, not allowing them in NATO, everything else? There's one reason, and it's because Ukraine is deep state controlled. If we lose that asset, we lose everything that they've put into play for the last 80 years. Okay. And so that is why uh, you will see them continue to just do everything they can without fully fighting and engaging to maintain those assets. Uh, and believe me, Putin knows it, okay? All right, let's move on over to this piece. Uh, there's an area of Ukraine approximately the size of Florida. Remember I said it is, it's as big as Texas, uh, but this place roughly the size of Florida is now riddled with landmines, which could take, they say, hundreds of years, hundreds of years to reverse. I don't know about all that, but... Um, the fact that there are landmines all over the place, uh, now add to that mix cluster mines, which is going to be the next level stuff. Okay. Uh, because that is why they are banned by so many countries because cluster mines tend to not all explode and they leave ordnance on the ground that does explode at a later time. And, um, it's very, very dangerous. And so anyway, just another data point for you. Let's, uh, move on over here to this piece. Yeah, they're saying Ukraine to receive F-16s by the end of the year. 
And uh, I don't know who this Kirby dude is, but um, it looks like, uh, oh, he's part of the National Security Council, right? John Kirby. Um, but uh, yeah, they're saying by the end of the year, which here's the reality. As Zelensky talks about, they're, they're not being trained. We're not giving them enough stuff to fight the war. Keep in mind, they are blowing through enough munitions in a month that uh, we produce in a year. All right. We're borrowing stuff from our own military and troops uh, to fight this war, and they're losing. Okay. So um, stop the insanity, right? Now you're going to give them F 16s. These things are going to get shot out of the air because these guys don't know how to fly them. All right. Okay. Like wasting your government dollars. Let's get over to this piece of it. Uh, this is going to be Dover Air Force Base. Big takeaway is. Just notice you continue to see 747s rolling in here. We've got uh, Coletta, Atlas Air, National Cargo, another Coletta. And um, these guys will basically be, um, as you can see, inbound from uh, New Jersey, JFK, RZE Poland. And then you get down here to Los Angeles. Now, what they're going to do is, uh, looks like this one is headed back to RZE. So these are 747s. They're bringing in more equipment probably to replace the stuff that has been lost, probably pre-positioning some more troops in some of these, all right? But um, that is where it's going. Again, another camber flight that's headed up here to Newfoundland. So this seems to be either a new base or something going on up there to the northeast um, in this general area. If we get back, let's, let's break back onto our NOTAM board. And uh, I know we were kind of zoomed in here, but... Uh, you get into Newfoundland, and uh, that's that's here, St. John's, et cetera. So why would we be putting 747s with uh, you know a lot of equipment and stuff? Maybe we're maybe we're dropping some um, missile defense in here. Who knows? But um, I've seen several of those flights coming out of Dover headed to this particular location. Uh, and then as we look at the NOTAMs here, just uh, just so you can see, uh, we do still have the danger boxes off the east and west coast. All right, back over here. We were talking Dover. Let's get over to Ramstein and um, just uh, notice uh, a lot of thunderstorms in the area, some pretty heavy ones too uh, in the general region. Um, a couple camber flights coming inbound. Anchorage, Alaska, look like this one's coming out of Columbus, Ohio. MD-11. Maybe troops coming in, right? And from there, these guys will get uh, dispersed into other areas. Notice 747 leaving Ramstein headed into RZE Poland Forward Operating Base. And uh, Western Global bringing in this one from Ostend. Um, that's an MD-11, so maybe troops. All right. Although it could be, could be artillery. RZE Poland, let's get down into it. Let me button this up. And uh, again, forward operating base, this is Ukraine. This is Belarus, pro-Russia, all right? That border runs all the way up, uh, you know, covering that. Uh, probably about half of the, the Polish border is uh, up against a pro-Russian area here. This is our forward operating base. This is where we're staging everything that's going to get pushed into Ukraine, most of it on train. All right, and then we get down further. Um, again, notice the board is starting to stack up with 747s. We saw this before uh, the, the offensive kicked off. Um, this could be bringing uh, more artillery, more equipment, more cluster bombs, whatever it may be. Uh, 747s, those are going to be your key uh, aircraft. Again, this one coming straight in from Portsmouth. Um, head down the list. And those are the, the ones that I'm seeing mainly listed as camper flights, okay? Then we see where it's exiting to, unknown destination, unknown destination. Those are 747s. Go down the list. And um, I don't know who that is. Let me just see. Oh, French Brigade. Headed back to Orleans. All right. Okay. Anything down here? Not seeing anything here on that side either. Okay, let's move away from the Ford Operating Base. Let's get into U.S. Transportation Command, a, uh, i.e. camber flights. Uh, two of them airborne here in the United States look to be coming out of, let me see, where is that? Uh, Hill Air Force Base. So Ogden, Utah, 747s. 
Uh, and another 747 out of Dover. But uh, this one right here, ah, uh, that's interesting. Uh, if you know anything about Ogden, that's a depot for F-35. They do a lot of landing gear, et cetera, for F-35, but they do a lot of other stuff too. And so it's like that one's uh, airborne destination unknown. The Dover RZE, we've already seen that. Two coming out of Kuwait, 747s. So um, yeah, we'll continue to, to keep an eye on all of that. Let's get over to this side of the middle. Yeah, Middle East, look at this. Uh, one coming out of Bahrain, and then uh, the other coming out of Kuwait. All right, Camber flights. And then this uh, Western Global. So looks like that one is rolling out of Washington Dulles, 747, headed to Frankfurt. Probably troops. Remember, we've got 3,000 that just got activated. So it takes a lot of airplanes to move 3,000 troops over. Um, and so we'll be seeing that for probably, you know, a week, maybe two, um, uh, as they pepper, you know, people get activated, they show up and then they get sent. Um, plus on top of that, you got another 446 that are being pulled in from the uh, ready reserve. Um, those numbers are only going to go up. And if we go to war, you can bet your bottom dollar, you're going to see a draft pop in very quickly because we don't have uh, near what we need to fight a war. Uh, at least not on that magnitude. All right, here we go. Omni headed out of uh, Anchorage to Okinawa. And then it looks like we got one coming out of um, Guam headed back to Hano. Remember, we've got a big, um, actually a large exercise going on down here. That's why we've seen these flights coming in and out. So a lot of troops headed that way and back uh, if the exercises have, have ended. Uh, but we do have another one now getting ready to kick off with Australia. All right. Um, and the Australia one is actually focusing on long-range missiles. So think uh, ICBMs, that kind of thing. All right. So we may see some launch boxes down there. All right. Uh, looks like the Brits are headed down there to Southeast Asia, maybe. Um, yeah. I don't know where that is. Sorry, I say Southeast Asia. <laughs> Hey, that's Florida. May as well be Southeast Asia. This is Cuba. Uh, yeah, Puerto Rico. Uh, there we go. Yeah, oh, man, I tell you what. You zoom in and you look at something and you think it's one thing and recognize it halfway through your sentence. All right, uh, looks like we got another one coming out of Cyprus, headed back probably to the UK, several others landing in the UK. So this is our equivalent of a camber flight, okay? And then last step, let's look at our uh, immigrant machine. Just notice the pump headed down south, all right? A lot of, lot of folks being deported. Of course, nowhere near what should be, but um, that is where they're headed right now. Looks like South America, Central America. Nothing up to the north. Okay, well, listen, that's going to do it. We'll continue to keep our eyes on our southern borders. We'll continue to watch things going on with... Um, with Ukraine, and then Syria is now our big watch list. As always, I don't feel like the China issue is going to be the immediate threat um, based on the fact that we seem to be pulling equipment over to the other side uh, of the world into Europe from there. Um, I think what we are probably seeing over on that side of the world is uh, just a, a force that is there to handle North Korea should they get out of line. That's probably about the extent of it, okay? All right, listen, that's going to be it. You guys uh, keep that powder dry, stay frosty, and we'll see you on Wednesday next at Rep. God bless. Monkey out. Thanks for watching, folks. Check out the latest gear and products over at monkeyworksus.com.